Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that talks about the phenomena of heroes in software engineering projects. A hero is someone who has made outsized contributions to a project. And a hero project is one where 80% or more of the contributions come from 20% of the developers. There has been a lot of study of hero projects in the past and many authors have found that hero projects are very prevalent. However, they all seem to think that having hero projects is not a great thing. They think that these hero contributors can end up becoming bottlenecks. And not only bottlenecks for code contributions, but also bottlenecks for communication among the members of the project. And yet, despite these supposed disadvantages, hero projects are very common. So that is the paradox that the authors in this paper want to investigate. The interesting thing about this paper is that the authors take a bit of a contrarian view and try to spell out why hero projects might be a good thing. And they back up that assertion with a lot of data. In this paper, they look at over 1,100 projects to glean patterns from them. The other really interesting thing about this paper is that the authors slightly redefine what a hero is. Instead of looking at just code contributions, they also look at the social communication structure within a project. So while the old definition was a hero is someone who writes 80% of the code, the definition that the authors use over here is a hero being someone that participates in 80% of the discussions prior to the code being committed. The difference from previous work is the modeling of social interactions, which includes things like creating or commenting on issues. So the authors here really are trying to model not just the final product, which is the code, but the interactions that precede it as well. Quick note on data sources and methodology, like pretty much every recent paper on empirical software engineering, the authors have collected data from GitHub open source projects. Now let's look at the specific questions that they're trying to answer by looking at the data. How common are hero projects? What impact does heroism have on code quality and whether team size changes any of these results. So question one is how common are hero projects? And the authors use the following definition of a hero project. It is one where when looking at the contributors who handle 95% more of the interactions, they see only 5% or less of the population. So a small number of contributors having a very large outsized impact on the interactions that go into building the entire project. And whether you look at it from the point of view of code interactions or social interactions, the answer is more or less the same. The vast majority, more than 85% of the projects in this GitHub data set were hero projects using this definition. Next, we come to the more interesting question, which is what is the impact of heroism on code quality? And these two graphs summarize the result of that question. Whether we look at it from the point of view of simply code interactions or social interactions, we see that heroes pretty much always produce less buggy code than non-heroes. In these graphs, the x-axis represents each project in their data set and the y-axis represents the median bug introduction percentage. It's really interesting to note these flat plateaus around here of non-hero developers that produce buggy code 100% of the time. So the summary is that heroes kind of live up to their name in that they write code that is dramatically less buggy than non-heroes. And to answer the last question, which is whether any of these results are affected by team size, the authors found that the answer was no. Team size did not have any effect. So one of the key takeaways from this paper is that when looking at this phenomena, 
you really need to think of software as a social process in addition to the technical process of writing code. And that's what they are trying to model with their definitions of heroism that take into account all these social interactions that happen within a project. They cite Herb Sleb, who looked at programming as a socio-technical process and what is now known as the Herb Sleb hypothesis, which is that if there are two pieces of code that communicate with each other, but the authors of those two pieces do not, then those pieces of code are likely to be buggy. In other words, better code is a result of better social interaction. And this again is the point on which the authors of this paper differ drastically from prior work, where prior work looked at heroism and hero projects as something to be discouraged and recommended that communication be spread out across more members of the project. The authors here are actually going the other way they are actually suggesting that communication should be more centralized because what they have seen is that the small number of hero developers are outputting better and less buggy code. This also has echoes of Fred Brooks's famous Mythical Man Month where Brooks argues that in order to maintain the conceptual integrity of a system, you really need to have one or a very small number of architects or chief programmers. So that was a quick look at a paper that looks at the phenomena of heroes and hero projects in software engineering and why they might actually be a good thing because heroes write better code. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.